Now we move on to the next natural progression from working on the character's arms to get to work on the character's fingers. Ooh, very exciting. I love the fingers of characters. I think working on hands is like, that's just the best part because they can be so expressive. And there's so many different ways of rigging up the character's fingers. Uh, many people just add forward kinematic joints, which is great. Uh, they let the animators do what they want. Others try and create fancy attributes that have to do with uh, inverse kinematics and all sorts of crazy things. Or I've even heard of people doing finger attractor rig setups where they create like a surface and the, the hand, as the hand gets closer to that surface, the fingers sort of try and blend onto it. Personally, I prefer something that's pretty easy to set up. It solves about 99% of the problems, is easy to work with, and doesn't confuse the animator. Um, at all. It's basically a combination FK rig with a little bit of something extra to add for uh, pressing of the wrists. So let's go ahead and take a look at some reference material and see what types of things are necessary. Okay, um, here's just a couple of quick sketches of some examples. I sketched this one of this lady um, when I was in an airport and she just she was throwing out a, a Starbucks coffee mug and the way that her hand was extended was just awesome just the way the fingers were all spread out and everything like that super expressive and of course you know doing a thumbs up very important to be able to do that so with the documentation there are some videos in this first video here you could see me reaching forward to grab onto this post and as I do you can notice how my hand is locked down my fingers are starting to grip it they overlap a little bit so notice the hand is locked first and then the fingers start to bend down then as I push off, my hand rolls forward and the fingers flip up at the end. Here comes the next person. This is Kevin. He does the same thing. Hands come down. And then watch as he rolls. You can see the pivot is right about here. And then as he pitches forward, the fingers start to bend and flip off. This next person is Bryce. He reaches in fingers roll down almost exactly the same as mine they flip off but then when they leave they cup together really nicely right in there and then Jason Osipo with the gloves and he's got some great stuff happening here where the fingers come in the hands are locked down but the wrists are moving and rotating a tiny bit gyrating and then they slip up come forward and then start to fall. Woo! Blink. So you can see a lot of really interesting motion there. Here's another example where I come forward, plant my hands, spin around, and then watch here as they roll to the side like that. Then I plant them again. And spread them out. And finally, another one of Jason Osipa. Here, where he's got his two fingers being pulled straight. The other one's pulling apart. These one's grabbing. Just being able to create really interesting hand shapes like these. Very important to be able to do stuff like that. So as we can tell, and just like every other part of the body, Extremely expressive, fingers are integral to defining a character's personality. Fingers are extremely individual as well. If you watch the way people hold their hands, someone who's very relaxed and casual will keep their fingers open and relaxed much more than somebody who's wound up tight like a loaded spring. Someone with obsessive compulsive disorder might keep rubbing their fingers together or picking at something. People use their hands to display and mask emotion. Um, if you watch someone lying, they might scratch their nose, crack their knuckles, etc., maybe tweak their ear. Whatever it is, they use their hands all the time to give away their emotional states. And no p two people use their hands exactly the same way. And no two emotions will give the same pose. So it's important that there's a way for the animator to pose all the fingers very quickly while still allowing them to have individual control for every joint in the hand. So if we look at some of our general animation requirements that our finger rig will contain, we have forward kinematics for general gesturing, the ability to press into a surface or lightly lift and twist the wrist, as you could see what hap was happening when uh, I was putting my hand down or when any of the other people were putting their hands down on that post. Um, this helps show weight and pressure. Uh, and the, we need the ability to layer animation controls to create intricate shapes. So let's go ahead and explore our rigging toolkit for our fingers and try out a bunch of different ideas. 
So the first thing we're going to look at is the ability to press the hand down into something. Basically, we want the ability to rotate the wrist up and down while locking the fingers into place. This will allow us to show weight and uh, pressure and stuff like that. Um, to do this, we're going to use a similar te technique to something that if you've ever done any leg rigging, it's called a reverse foot rig or an inverse foot rig. Um, it's similar to that, but a little bit different. So let's go ahead and take a look at basically what the concept is. If we look at a normal joint hierarchy, it works like this, where you've got the parent over here on the left, and then the joint on the right is a child of that. If you do forward rotation, you could see that that joint goes down. What we want to do is be able to do inverse rotation, where, or a reverse rotation, where we take the top, the parent, and rotate it up while leaving the child where it is. This is called an inverse foot rig, or a reverse rig, or something like that. What this allows us to do is create a standard hand rig which has the root uh, starting at the wrist and follow through the fingers but le be able to lift the wrist and leave the fingers alone. So let's start by creating a new scene and in here we're going to create a segment joint chain. So we'll go to a side view and we'll just go to animation skeleton joint tool and go click Oops. hold down X for grid snap, and let's just change the display of our joints so they're a little bit bigger. Like that. Perfecto! And we're going to add some geometry to these segments just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Now in order to control these joints on an individual basis, for example, I want to lift this one and do basically that type of thing, I'm going to add some IK handles onto each of these joints. Because otherwise, there's no real way for me to lift this one up and tell this one to stay put, right? So, we'll go Skeleton, IK Handle Tool, Option Box. Make sure we're on a single chain solver. And I'll just create IK from there to there, and IK from there to there. So you can see we've got these IK joints. And if we were to save keys on both of these, you can see that I can take this one and start to move it. And the IK joints will try and keep, or sorry, the IK handles will try and keep the joints stationary. But because there's no bend happening in here, it's really difficult to do. And unless you move this exactly in a circle, these joints jitter around quite a bit, kind of like crazy. But there's a way we can get around that. What we're going to do is simply group these two IK handles together. Control G. So you can see there's a group here, and if I move that group, those two IK handles will stay the same. So in order to get this joint now to move correctly, you can see we still have that same problem. What we want to do is actually move this joint in a direct arc, just like that. So what we can do to do this is we want to move the pivot of this joint. But if we go ahead and try and just move the pivot itself, you'll notice it actually moves the joint because the joint's position is based off of where it thinks its pivot is. So instead, we're going to create a locator and we're going to make that the parent of the joint. And we'll put the locator right here, take this joint and parent it. And now if we take this locator and rotate it, you can see that we are able to lift the joint up and get this bend that we want while the fingers or the rest of the hand stays totally stationary. Now this is pretty cool to be able to move the pivot like that or to move the joint and bend it like this but if you look at the reference video you'll notice the hand doesn't just always bend straight up and down sometimes it leans side to side so our goal is to add this functionality as well into the reverse hand rig.